In the mechanism we just looked at, the nucleophile was anionic and kicked off an anionic leaving group. But nucleophilic acyl substitution can also occur under acidic conditions, and here the nucleophilic addition and beta elimination steps are catalyzed by acid using a mechanistic pattern that we've seen before. A proton goes on, the business occurs, and then a proton comes off. So in this slide and the next, we're going to follow an acid-catalyzed nucleophilic substitution to see how this works mechanistically. If you take an ester and you put it under acidic conditions in water, aqueous acidic conditions, you end up with an alcohol, ROH, derived from the alkoxy portion of the ester, and a carboxylic acid. This is a nucleophilic acyl substitution process where the nucleophile is water and the leaving group is the alcohol, ROH, and it's acid catalyzed. Under the acid catalyzed conditions, under the acidic conditions, proton transfer to the carbonyl oxygen occurs first to create a protonated carbonyl intermediate. This is more electrophilic than the starting ester and is susceptible to nucleophilic attack, relatively easy nucleophilic attack by water at this point. This is a nucleophilic addition elementary step, analogous to that first step of the sort of canonical SNAC mechanism. And after deprotonation of this, we get the neutral tetrahedral intermediate. This particular tetrahedral intermediate has two OH groups linked to the, to the former carbonyl carbon, one derived from the carbonyl oxygen and the other derived from water. In the next stage of the mechanism, we'll see this tetrahedral intermediate undergo acid-catalyzed beta elimination of the alcohol leaving group. This acid-catalyzed beta elimination follows this same mechanistic pattern. Proton goes on, the beta elimination occurs, and then a proton comes off to regenerate the catalyst and produce the neutral product. So the tetrahedral intermediate here is protonated at the OR group, since that's going to ultimately be our leaving group. This creates a situation where beta elimination is now a lot more favorable, since we're kicking off a positively charged HOR plus group here. So beta elimination now occurs readily. This kicks off the alcohol product as a leaving group and leaves us with a protonated carboxylic acid, which is very close to the neutral carboxylic acid product. All that needs to happen now is proton transfer back to the conjugate base of the catalyst. Here I'm just using water, assuming we're in aqueous solution. And this gives the neutral carboxylic acid product. So notice the mechanistic pattern here. Proton went on, beta elimination occurred, and then the proton came off in the last elementary step. So this shows how nucleophilic acyl substitution can be catalyzed by acid via positively charged reactive intermediates. Protonating the carbonyl oxygen, that's very, very common. That allows the nucleophile to add in and the nucleophilic atom becomes positively charged. And then removal of a proton from that nucleophilic atom generates a neutral tetrahedral intermediate. And then we protonate the leaving group atom. Here it's O, the O in OR. That facilitates beta elimination, and then a final proton transfer regenerates the catalyst and gives the neutral product. This is a general pattern that's worth keeping in mind, both for this reaction, which we'll see in detail in a later video, and for related hydrolysis reactions of other carboxylic acid derivatives that occur in acid. The mechanistic story under basic conditions is quite a bit different. So now if we take an ester and we hit it with basic water, sodium hydroxide dissolved in water, we end up initially with a sodium carboxylate salt, since the carboxylic acid is quite acidic, certainly acidic enough to be deprotonated by hydroxide, as well as the alcohol, ROH. And typically, we treat that carboxylate salt with acid to get the neutral carboxylic acid, which we can separate out from the sodium salt and all that other good stuff. The mechanism here, because the hydroxide is a pretty good nucleophile in and of itself, hydroxide can add directly to the carbonyl carbon. And we've seen this in other contexts where base catalysis occurs. For example, base catalyzed hydration of ketones and aldehydes, where hydroxide is used to catalyze the addition of water across a CO double bond in a ketone or aldehyde. Here it's a similar thing going on. Hydroxide can add directly to the carbonyl carbon in an ADN step, and beta elimination of the alkoxide can occur to give the carboxylic acid. Now, both of these steps are reversible, right, since we've just taken an O minus and turned it into an O minus and ultimately an O minus and OR minus <laughs> that gets kicked off here. But here's where the reaction gets irreversible. OR minus deprotonates the carboxylic acid very, very rapidly, since this is an extremely favorable nuclear or a proton transfer process to give a carboxylate an HOR.
So in fact, this reaction isn't base catalyzed at all since we get stuck at the anionic carboxylate product. We need a full equivalent of hydroxide base to get this reaction to go. And this is again common in nucleophilic acyl substitutions under basic conditions. The hydroxide anion adds in directly, so we need a full equivalent of hydroxide to do a lot of base hydrolysis type of chemistry with carboxylic acid derivatives. Amines are rather unique as nucleophiles in that they can add directly to the carbonyl carbon without the need for an acid or even a base catalyst. Acids are problematic because they'll protonate the amino nitrogen and shut down this nucleophilic reactivity. And so if an acid is used in one of these reactions, it's necessarily very weak, something like acetic acid. And as we did in imine formation, we're going to invoke a Zwitter ionic intermediate in these reactions involving amine nucleophiles with carboxylic acid derivatives. And in this Zwitter ion, we're going to have O- derived from the carbonyl oxygen and N+, derived from the amino nucleophile. So I wanted to show an example with an anhydride carboxylic acid derivative. This is also going to reveal some interesting things about the anhydride that we'll touch on in more detail later. But the typical mechanism with an amine nucleophile and a carboxylic acid derivative, like the basic case, like the case of basic conditions, starts with nucleophilic addition of the base to the carbonyl carbon. Before we get there, I do want to point out that we're going to use this carboxylate, highlighted in, in orange, as a leaving group. And I'm going to abbreviate it as OAC. This is a decent leaving group because of the stabilization of negative charge in the carboxylate. So keep that in mind as we move forward through this mechanism. So nucleophilic addition occurs first. And this is unique to amines, really. Right? We end up with this Zwitter ionic intermediate with an O- minus and an N+. Plus. Now a couple of proton transfers set up elimination. So first, we lose a proton off of that nitrogen, and NH4 plus is a byproduct here. And now we can eliminate off that acetate group, OAC minus, and this produces, in this case, an amide product with an NH2 there. Notice also that acetate is produced as a byproduct, and this is okay. This is a resonance stabilized anion. It's relatively stable relatively stable anions, so this is a favorable process overall. So the unique thing about amine nucleophiles really is this Zwitter ionic intermediate that we can directly do AD sub N even though the nucleophile is neutral. Most neutral nucleophiles require acid catalysis to go, things like alcohols and less reactive nucleophiles require acid catalysis, whereas amine nucleophiles generally do not. And we commonly use two equivalents of the amine, since one equivalent is functioning as a nucleophile, and the second equivalent is functioning as a base. Nucleophilic acyl substitution is really a general reaction type, and I encourage you to think about it that way. Don't think of the specific reactions that we'll look at in the rest of this unit as particular things you need to know. In the same way that SN2 reactions that you learned way back in Organic Chemistry 1 were really an entire category of reactions that you could recognize by identifying a good leaving group, a good nucleophile, and an electrophilic carbon. The same thing happens with nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. We can look for a nucleophile, look for that electrophilic carbonyl carbon, and a good or at least potential leaving group linked to the carbonyl carbon. So this slide just kind of surveys all the various transformations that we'll look at in the remainder of this unit of the various carboxylic acid derivatives one to the other. And generally as you move down this sort of reaction map, decreasing reactivity is the rule. So the acyl chloride is pretty much king because of this awesome leaving group attached to the carbonyl carbon. As we go down, the leaving groups get worse and worse and worse. At the very bottom is the NR2 group, which is a terrible terrible leaving group, right? And the, the carboxylic acid as well has a really bad leaving group in OH- minus right here linked to the carbonyl carbon. So generally we can move down this map spontaneously and this is an important thing to keep in mind because we're going from highly reactive great leaving groups at the top of the map to terrible leaving groups at the bottom. And if you pay close attention to the reagents used you'll realize that these reagents are just the nucleophile, right? If we want to convert for example an acyl chloride into a carboxylic acid. Well, the nucleophile in that case is water, and all you have to do is treat the acyl chloride with water.
So there's no point to memorizing all of these reactions, and I encourage you not to think about it that way. Think about these reactions as more like SN2 reactions. That's not their mechanism, but as a general class of reactions, as opposed to a specific transformation, right, that you have to know, like the diels alder reaction or, you know, some kind of named reaction like that. Each of these is just one instance of a broader general pattern that we want to start to recognize, a good nucleophile displacing a good leaving group at a carbonyl carbon.